is fierce and long, but thou hast made us mighty and stronger than the strong. In his future, and um, I want to read a prayer of good news for you to think about. Lord, and I was wondering if somebody could put the bad place down. Okay, here's the prayer from Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. So Mark is going to go on after this, and then we'll have different presentations. And it'll end with Sue and Trent. Thank you. Sometimes I think, and I think of things that long ago and far away. I think of things to remember. I think of things that the Lord said to Abraham. He said, leave your country your relatives, your father's home, and go to a land that I'm going to show you. I will give you many descendants and they will become a great nation. I will bless you and make your name famous so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, but I will curse those who curse you. And through you, I will bless all the nations. Someone special is coming. A child is born to us. A child is given to us and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Ever Ever Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time. The Lord Almighty is determined to do all this. That is what Isaiah has told us. And in, in Micah, the Lord says, Bethlehem Ephrathah, you are one of the smallest towns in Judah, but out of you I will bring a ruler for Israel, whose family line goes back to ancient, ancient times. These are wonderful things for us to think of. And for the rest of our program, we hope that you'll hear more and learn more. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among I am going to say, uh, so Mark did steal a couple of my songs earlier, but, you know, in recording, yeah, as, you know, a little bit expected, but as Aunt Sharon was talking about, you know, today it's about Jesus, his birth, his presence, and his future, and so the first song, it's, you know, hopefully you guys know it, it's in the Praise Lord, it's 253, I'll, and I'll be playing it twice, it's Sing Hallelujah to the Lord, and when you're looking at, think about the lyrics, Especially when I'm going through, it's think about the first verse and then the last verse. So it's sing hallelujah to the Lord for he is coming. And the last one, Jesus is coming for his own. So the kind of the epitome for the future of what we have, you know, what he's given us uh, in the Praise the Lord book. Uh, 253. For those of you that are here, if you want to hum, hum along or sing the soprano part as a bass, whichever one.
Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself has, have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. The birth of John the Baptist foretold. Verse 5. In the time of Herod king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless, because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When the Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripping with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer... After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Thank you. 
Now we're going to read from the uh, book of Luke, starting at verse 26 to verse 38. Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give, will give him the throne of his father David, and will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know any man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you, Therefore also, that Holy One who is, who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also con conceived a son in an old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was, who was called barren. For with, God, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to the word. And the angel departed from her. <clears throat> um, I'll be reading Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 55. Um, <clears throat> At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to, her, to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped, leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you would bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to see me? As soon as the sound of her greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will, be, will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, 
During the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all the Jews. Storm was with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the guy secretly and found out from the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may go and worship him. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 20. And there was a shepherd living out in the field nearby, keeping watching over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them and to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be assigned to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth, in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great kindly of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, a praising praising God and saying, "Glory to the he glory to the God in the highest of heaven, and on the earth peace to those who on whom." His favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Yes, sir, I tricked! Music by Christian Nash. Until it came to rest over the place where the child was. Mm -hmm. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. 
For Herod is about to search for the child and destroy him. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious. And he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to that time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. And when eight days were completed before his circumcision, his name was then called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of their purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what was said in the law of the Lord a pair of two turtle doves and two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him in his arms and blessed God. Praise God. And he said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of the, thy people Israel. And his father and mother were amazed at the things which were being said about him. And Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rise again, rising again, of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul as well, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was advanced in years, having lived with a husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84, and she never left the temple, serving night and day with fastings and prayers. And at that very moment, she came up and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to all those who were looking for the redemption of Israel. Praise the Lord, for he has visited his people. And a Merry Christmas to you all. So I was a little mistaken before when I said that Mark took all the Christmas hymns. There is actually one more Christmas hymn that's in the praise of the Lord. It is number 39, and it's 
hopefully something that you guys know. It's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And, uh, yeah, uh, this one we can go through twice and, you know, see how exciting it is on the second time through. Thank you, Sharon, and thank you, uh, our Lord Jesus, and thank you, our Heavenly Father, for what a wonderful day this has been and what a great time to glorify your names. Um, in the end of Revelation, Jesus says, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And he says, yes, I am coming quickly. And so we all together can say, amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll ask um, Trent to say a prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, we are certainly grateful for this time to remember Jesus and earlier and the day and now to remember his, his birth. These are wonderful things, all things. Uh, point to our Savior and all things that we can remember about him and celebrate are good things. And we hope that these things can continue in our lives, that we could always give glory to your name and to your son who rules as king. And it is in our Savior Jesus' name that we pray now. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>